Hello and welcome to day 308 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleva. Please also share this video with your friends, family, and loved ones. Encourage them to join us as we read our Bibles today. Let us get started. Let's say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with open hearts and minds ready to receive from your word today the 308th day of our bible journey thank you for the gift of scripture which strengthens encourages and guides us as we gather to read and reflect on your word we invite your holy spirit to fill this time opening our eyes to see the truths you want to reveal lord teach us correct us and inspire us as we read may your word draw us closer to you shape our character and equip us to walk in faith and love help us to apply what we learn today letting your wisdom and your grace transform us from within we dedicate this time to you, asking for your presence and your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Day 308, November 4th, 2024. 365 days Bible reading. Old Testament. Ezekiel 4, 5 and 6. New Testament. Hebrews 5, 11 to 14. And Hebrews 6, 1 to 12. Psalms and Proverbs, Proverbs 26, 23 to 28, and Proverbs 27, 1 to 4. Old Testament NIV version, Ezekiel 4, 1 to 17. Siege of Jerusalem symbolized. Now, son of man, take a block of clay, put it in front of you, and draw the city of Jerusalem on it. Then, Lay siege to it, erect siege works against it, build a ramp up to it, set up cams against it and put battering rams around it. Then take an iron pan, place it as an iron wall between you and the city and turn your face toward it. It will be under siege and you will, you shall besiege it. This will be a sign to the people of Israel. Then lie on your left side and put the sin of the people of Israel upon yourself. You are to bear their sin for the number of days you lie on your side. I have assigned you the same number of days as the years of their sin. So for th 390 days you will bear the sin of the people of Israel. After you have finished this, lie down again, this time on your right side, and bear the sin of the people of Judah. I have assigned you 40 days, a day for each year. Turn your face toward the siege of Jerusalem and with bared arm prophesy against her. I will tie you up with ropes so that you cannot turn from one side to the other until you have finished the days of your siege. Take wheat and barley, beans and lentils, millet and spelt, put them in a storage jar and use them to make bread for yourself. You are to eat it during the 390 days you lie on your side. Weigh out 20 shekels of food to each each day and eat at each at set times. Also, measure out a sixth of a hin of water and drink it at set times. Eat the food as you would a loaf of barley bread, break it, bake it in the sight of the people using human excrement for fuel. The Lord said, In this way the people of Israel will eat defiled food among the nations while I will drive them. Then I said, 
not so, Sovereign Lord. I have never defiled myself. From my youth until now, I have never eaten anything found dead or torn by wild animals. No impure meat has ever entered my mouth. Very well, he said. I will let you bake your bread over cow dung instead of human excrement. He then said to me, Son of man, I am about to cut off the food supply in Jerusalem. The people will eat rationed food in anxiety and drink rationed water in despair. For food and water will be scarce. They will be appalled at the sight of each one and will waste away because of their sin. Ezekiel 5, 1-17 God's razor of judgment. Now, son of man, take a sharp sword and use it as a barber's razor to shave your head and your beard. Then, take a set of scales and divide up the hair. When the days of your siege come to an end, burn a third of the hair inside the city. Take a third and strike it with the sword all around the city, and scatter it third to the wind, for I will pursue them with drawn sword. But take a few hairs and tuck them away in the folds of your garment. Again, take a few of these and throw them into the fire and burn them up. A fire will spread from there to all Israel. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, This is Jerusalem which I have set in the center of the nations, with countries all around her. Yet, in her wickedness, she has rebelled against my laws and decrees more than the nations and countries around her. She has rejected my laws and has not followed my decrees. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, You have been more unruly than the nations around you, and have not followed my decrees or kept my laws. You have not even conformed to the standards of the nations around you. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself am against you, Jerusalem, and I will inflict punishment on you in the sight of the nations. Because of all your detestable idols, I will do to you what I have never done before and will never do again. Therefore, in your midst, Parents will eat their children, and children will eat their parents. I will inflict punishment on you, and will scatter all your survivors to the winds. Therefore, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your vile images and detestable practices, I myself will shave you. I will not look on you with pity or spare you. A third of your people will die of the plague or perish by famine inside you. A third will fall by the sword outside your walls, and a third will scatter to the winds and pursue with drawn sword. Then my anger will cease and my wrath against them will subdue, subside, and I will be avenged. And when I have spent my wrath on them, they will know that I, the Lord, have spoken in my zeal. I will make you a ruin and a reproach among the nations around you, in the sight of all who pass by. You will be a reproach and a taunt, a warning and an object of horror to the nations around you when I inflict punishment on you in anger, and in wrath and with stinging rebuke. I, the Lord, have spoken. When I shoot at you with my deadly and destructive arrows of famine, I will shoot to destroy you. I will bring more and more famine upon you and cut off your supply of food. I will send famine and wild beasts against you, and they will leave you childless. Plague and bloodshed will sweep through you, and I will bring the sword against you. I, the Lord, have spoken." Ezekiel 6, 1-14 Doom for the mountains of Israel The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face against the mountains of Israel. Prophesy against them and say, You mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to the mountains and hills, to the ravines and valleys. I am about to bring a sword against you, and I will destroy your high places. Your altars will be demolished and 
your incense altars will be smashed and I will slay your people in front of your idols. I will lay the dead bodies of the Israelites in front of their idols and I will scatter your bones around your altars. Wherever you live, the towns will be laid waste and the high places demolished so that your altars will be laid waste and devastated, your idols smashed and ruined, your incense altars broken down and what you have made wiped out. Your people will fall slain among you and you will know that I am the Lord. But I will spare some of you. Sorry, but I will spare some. For some of you will escape the sword when you are scattered among the lands and nations. Then, in the nations where they have been carried captive, those who escape will remember me, how I have been grieved by their adulterous hearts which have turned away from me, and by their eyes which have lusted after their idols. They will load themselves for the evil they have done and for all their detestable practices and they will know that i am the lord i did not threaten in vain to bring this calamity on them this is what the sovereign lord says strike your hands together and stamp your feet and cry out alas because of all the wicked and detestable practices of the people of israel for they will fall by the sword famine and plague one who is far away will die of the plague and one who is near will fall by the sword and anyone who survives and is spared will die of famine. So will I pour out my wrath on them and they will know that I am the Lord. When their people lie slain among their idols, around their altars, on every high hill and on all the mountain tops, under every spreading tree and every leafy oak, places where they offered fragrant incense to all their idols and i will stretch out my hand against them and make the land a desolate waste from the desert to dibla wherever they live then they will know that i am the lord new testament niv version hebrews 5 11 to 14 warning against falling away we have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness but solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil hebrews 6 1 to 12 therefore let us move beyond the elementary teachings about christ and be taken forward to maturity not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And God permitted, permitting, we will do so. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance, to their loss. They are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case, the things that have to do with salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love 
you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end, so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Psalms and Proverbs Proverbs 26, 23-28 Like a coating of silver draws on earthenware are fervent lips with an evil heart. Enemies disguise themselves with their lips, but in their hearts they have but deceit. Though their speech is charming, do not believe them, for seven abominations fill their hearts. Their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. A lying tongue hates those it hurts, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Proverbs 27, 1-4 do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Let someone else praise you, and not your own mouth, an outsider, and not your own lips. Stone is heavy, and sand a burden, but a fool's provocation is heavier than both. Anger is cruel, and fury overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Amen. Lessons learned from the Old Testament verses, Ezekiel 4. God's warnings are meant to bring repentance before judgment falls. Ezekiel's symbolic actions demonstrate the severity of the coming judgment on Jerusalem due to their rebellion against God. The lesson here is that God provides ample warning and opportunities to repent. His desire is for people to turn from sin and seek his mercy, yet, there are consequences when his warnings are ignored. Ezekiel 5 Disobedience to God results in severe consequences not only affecting individuals but entire communities. God outlines the judgment on Jerusalem for their own faithfulness, showing the depth of consequences for turning away from him. This chapter emphasizes that rejecting God's commands leads to destruction. Highlighting the importance of faithfulness. Obedience to God not only brings blessings but protects us from avoidable harm. Ezekiel 6 Idolatry leads to separation from God and He alone is worthy of our praise and worship. Ezekiel delivers God's judgment against Israel's idolatry, warning that destruction will come upon those who turn to false gods. The lesson here is that Devotion to anything above God creates distance from Him. True fulfillment and security are found in worshipping God alone, who seeks to restore us to a relationship with Him. Lessons learned from the New Testament verses Hebrews 5, 11-14 Spiritual growth requires dedication and a desire to move beyond the basics of faith. The writer of Hebrews encourages believers to mature in their understanding of God's word, moving from milk to solid food. The lesson here is that deepening our faith involves active engagement with scripture and a commitment to growth. We are called to seek wisdom, develop discernment, and grow in our relationship with God through intentional study and practice. Hebrews 6, 1-12 We are encouraged to grow in faith and not become stagnant, trusting in God's promises to fulfill his purpose for us. This passage warns against falling away from faith because, but also reassures us of the hope we have in God's faithfulness. The lesson here is that a life of faith involves perseverance, continual growth, and a commitment to live in a way that honors God. We can be confident that God rewards our faithfulness and is just in his promises. Lessons learned from Proverbs 26, 23 to 28. Deception and insincere words ultimately lead to harm. This passage 
warns against those who use kind words to hide harmful intentions and emphasizes the destructive nature of dishonesty. The lesson here is that integrity and sincerity should be at the core of our interactions. Words should reflect truth and genuine care as deceit only causes harm and division. Proverbs 27, 1-4 Humility and restraint are essential as boasting and envy bring trouble. This proverb reminds us not to boast about the future as it is uncertain and to avoid the destructive impact of jealousy and anger. The lesson here is that humility brings peace while arrogance and envy lead to conflict. By embracing humility and patience, we can walk in wisdom and honor. Faith Declarations from Ezekiel 4, 5, and 6 I heed God's warnings and I turn away from anything that draws me from His presence. I confess that I will seek His mercy and respond to His guidance with a humble heart. I declare that I will listen to God's voice, allowing His truth to direct my steps and draw me closer to Him. I recognize the importance of obedience to God and I confess my commitment to live faithfully according to his word. I will not take his grace for granted, but I will walk in his ways with sincerity. I declare that I will honor God's commands and keep my heart set on him, knowing that obedience brings protection and blessings. I reject idolatry and I devote my worship solely to the Lord. I confess that nothing in my life will take priority over God, for He alone is my source of fulfillment and security. I will guard my heart from anything that distracts me from Him, choosing to worship God in spirit and in truth. Faith declarations from Hebrews 5, 11 to 14 and Hebrews 6, 1 to 12. I commit to spiritual growth, moving beyond the basics and seeking deeper understanding of God's word. I declare that I will not remain stagnant in my faith, but I will pursue maturity and wisdom. I will study, learn and practice discernment. discernment allowing God's word to shape me and strengthen my relationship with him. I will press forward in my faith, relying on God's promises and trusting in his faithfulness. I confess that I will not become complacent, but I will persevere growing in my commitment to live a life that honors God. I am confident in his promises, knowing that my labor in him is not in vain and I hold firmly to the hope he has given me. Faith declarations from Proverbs 26, 23 to 28 and Proverbs 27, 1 to 4. I choose honesty and sincerity in my words and actions, rejecting deceit and false intentions. I confess that I will speak truthfully valuing integrity and building relationships founded on trust. I will avoid words that bring harm or division, seeking instead to uplift and encourage those around me. I will walk in humility, recognizing that only God knows what the future holds. I declare that I will not boast or act in arrogance for my trust in, is in the Lord. I will also guard my heart against jealousy and anger, embracing peace and patience as I follow God's path for my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, 
I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are super excited to welcome you into God's family. Please kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to share this broadcast with your friends, family, and loved ones. Encourage them to join us as we read our Bibles every day. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a blessing having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.